I'm Dr. Zoda Ahmed and I will be discussing uh, 10 radiology cases in this video. This is the first case of a five-year-old girl who presented with hematuria and dysuria. This we can see there's an abnormality in the unary bladder with a large heterogeneously enhancing lobulated mass filling the unary bladder, uh, involving the unary bladder wall and with perivesical extension. So in a five-year-old girl, the diagnosis is a malignant neoplasm, most likely rhabdomyosarcoma. Rhabdomyosarcoma is the most common malignant urinary bladder tumor in children less than 10 years. Typically, it has large, nodular, and extensive uh, at presentation. Genitary urinary RMS may involve prostate in males, cervix and vagina in females, apart from the urinary bladder. Second case, these are bilateral ice cream shaped lesions in the cistern and extending into the interlocustic canal with enhancement. So these are bilateral vestibular schwannomas, diagnostic for NF type 2. NF type 2 has multiple inherited schwannomas, meningiomas, and spinal epineumomas. Third case, we see an abnormality in the left CP angle system. There's a lobulated dumbbell shaped lesion extending into the Meckel scale. It is markedly T2 hyper intense with heterogeneous enhancement. So this is a trigeminal nerve schwannoma. Trigeminal nerve schwannoma is the second most common intracranial schwannoma after vestibular schwannoma. Uh, it is associated with an F type 2. This is the fourth case where we see that the kidney is enlarged on these ultrasound images and the calluses are dilated with the hypoechoic exudates present within the enlarged calluses. The coronal CT images uh, shows how the right kidney is markedly enlarged as compared to the left. There's a stack on calculus and uh, the dilated calluses are filled with hypodense, soft tissue irritating lesions. Diagnosis is xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis. This is a chronic granulomatous process due to E. coli and proteus metabolis infection affecting children and middle-aged adults. It is associated with stagon campus and is treated with nephrectomy. The fifth case, abdominal radiograph shows presence of air in the right renal fossa. Contrast enhanced CT shows heterogeneous enhancement with loss of corticomedullary differentiation in the right kidney. There is extensive perinephric path stranding associated with the perinephric collection with air foci within it. So this is an empyzomatous pyelonephritis. This condition is associated with diabetes or immunocompromised status. Type 1 is more severe with extensive pancarmal destruction. Fluid collection is limited. Uh, there is high mortality and it can be treated only with nephrectomy. This is a type 2 which is more common. Pancarmal destruction is less and uh, this is the less severe type. Peri Peridinal fluid collection with air is characteristic. Mortality is less and it can be treated with aggressive medical treatment and for cutaneous drainage. This is the sixth case, three-year-old child. The most obvious abnormality is a large effusion on the left side. And uh, the scapula also shows abnormality. It is enlarged and shows permeative type of lytic destruction uh, with expansion. Contrast enhanced CT shows extensive cortical destruction uh, on both the sides associated with a large soft tissue mass. So the diagnosis is an aggressive or malignant scapular neoplasm. Uh, the biopsy was peanut. Osseous peanuts can affect children and young adults. These are destructive lesions with large soft tissue masses and very hostile reaction associated with poor prognosis. Seventh case, 34 year old lady the abnormality is in the left side retroperitoneum. Uh, there is mass effect on the kidney. It is pushed anteriorly, uh, which are the pointers of this lesion being retroperitoneal. The colon is displaced anteriorly, and this mass is predominantly fat density with few strands of soft tissue density. Cardinal CT shows the extent of the lesion better. This is a retroperitoneal liposarcoma. Any lipomatous lesion in the retroperitoneum is a sarcoma until proven otherwise. RP lipomas are very rare, although in this particular case, the diagnosis was clear that it was a liposarcoma, but sometimes the differentiation is difficult. Smaller lesions also need to be differentiated with exopytic renal angiomyelipomas. lipomas. You can use claw sign or a focal renal defect to differentiate. Treatment is resection, although local reference is quite common. This is the eighth case. Uh, of a small child where we see there's a diffuse abnormality in all the visualized bones. There is increased sclerosis and density of the ribs, spine, long bones with uh, 
Ellenmere flask deformity of the long bones, that is metapazal leucency and under depilation of the long bones. Abdominal radiograph shows a paraspinomegaly. Spine has typical sandwich vertebra appearance. So this is a case of osteopetrosis. It's a condition uh, characterized by defective osteoclasts, which leads to formation of sclerotic and brittle bones, which are prone to fractures. Imaging wise, uh, there is early mere flask deformity, bone within bone appearance and sandwich vertebra. Also, uh, clinically, there will be hepatosplenomegaly and the treatment is bone marrow transplantation. The ninth case, uh, we see there is a uh, good collection in the left lower cavity, which is tracking down into the chest wall, the involvement of the revs, and there's an overlying uh, subcutaneous collection or abscess. Where is shown on coronal T2 images, where there's a hyper intensity in one of the ribs, and this is collection is tracking into the interosseous space and into the oblong uh, soft tissues. So this is a case of ostitis with cold abscess. This can either be hematogenous or can spread directly from the impairment. The tenth case, uh, these are T2-weighted images, diffusion V1000 images and ADC. Uh, we see in the top and bottom panel port, there are multiple T2 hyperintense lesions, small lesions in the liver, which do not show any diffusion restriction. 3D MRCP image shows multiple well-defined uh, T2 hyperintense lesions with no binary communication. And uh, these are all 5 to 6 mm or less. So the diagnosis is von Meinberg complexes. Also known as biliary hematomas, ultrasound is characterized by hypercochlesions with common tail artifact. On MRI, there will be T2 hyperintense, no enhancement, no diffusion restriction. Differential is microapsis, which will show target sign on ultrasound and diffusion restriction. Carolis disease uh, is cleared on MRCP because there will be biliary communication and central dot sign on T2 weighted images. Metastasis will have variable size, diffusion restriction, and variable enhancement. Thank you for listening.